For this video, I am dividing the painting surface into precise quarters. I would usually eyeball it, but for clarity on the video, I wanted all of the measurements to be seen as accurate and precise. I want the face to be about life size, 6 inches with the chin starting a little bit below center point. The lines on the photo reference are very important. They're my key to getting the proportions of the face correct. Most of the time I eyeball it, but in this video I wanted the measurements to be exact. From the hairline to the top of the eyebrow is one and a half inches. From the top of the eyebrow to the bottom of the nose and bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin are equal proportions, two and a quarter inches. So that makes the full face a nice, easy six inches. Perfect for a demonstration. I'd like to start <clears throat> with the profile of the hair and then build the face within it. I'm always checking diagonals, plumb lines, and every point of reference I can find to make a good, accurate drawing to begin the painting. These are light lines, not very sharp. That allows for corrections and adjustments later on. Mainly right now, you're just trying to get the diagonals. and all of the lines beginning and ending at the right place. Where does it change direction? That horizontal center line <clears throat> comes in really handy. It lets me see that that is where the hair comes back into her body. Uh, sometimes using the iPad, it's a little aggravation, yeah, but the benefits certainly outweigh any, any problems. These are all very soft lines. Many will need adjustments, slight angle changes, volume changes. But I am aware at this point of where is the sharpest line, where is the most defined line, the hard edge. Sometimes in the drawing it helps to just make a straight line and then carve back into it where the plane changes. This part of the eye is a hard edge and I'll be keeping that in mind throughout the painting. Double checking, reinforcing, making slight changes. Is that hair or shadow? It really doesn't matter because the value is dark. Where does her neckline begin? It's very easy to find when you're looking at uh, two straight lines. The horizontal 
and the vertical. This is a neat shadow that's on her neck. Uh, lovely, it's gonna be lovely to paint. And the necklace, will I do it or not? You'll find later in the video <laughs> that I do it, but then I take it out. It's all an option, isn't it, when you're painting? Your choice, you're the boss. These are just um, the big areas of the painting. No detail. Will I put all those creases and folds and difference in color into the painting? Maybe. Again, it's a choice for later on. A skewer is your friend. You can use a piece of charcoal, even a pastel pencil, whatever you have that is straight, that will give you some good indication of where things are happening on the face. I'm not concerned with a hat right now. It's a problem for later. But I will say that the two things that, that were the biggest problem for me throughout the whole painting were the angles and the hair positioning on the forehead. I went back into those several times to make adjustments. Finally had to close my eyes away from the reference photo and just draw and paint what I knew would look correct using color and value. Or value and color, I should put that first. A straight line, how far over does that go? What is the furthest point to the left? And it's her cheek, so I have to get that in. And then what's the angle of that cheek? Does it go in and out? It's certainly not a straight line. And yes, I am, it is okay to erase on this paper. It is UART 400 grit. And I use a soft rubber eraser and then brush the um, eraser crumbs off the paper with a little fan brush. It does not seem to affect any of the pastel that I'm putting on later. But it does allow me to refine the edges and see only the good parts. This little edge, because it's a hard edge, and it will remain a hard edge throughout the painting, I, I really felt like I had to get it right. Um, of course, the photo is not going to tell you everything that you need to know, so I just have to keep working at it. Working, working. Checking, double-checking. Where is this in relation to that? And the tilt of that hat, the outer edge of the, the rim, is really important because it indicates the shadow. And it also gives them more personality to the girl who's wearing it. The straight line that I had going across for the eyebrows, of course they're not straight across, but it gives me an indication of where the top of the eyebrow begins, where it is. 
from the vertical center line, I am deciding how far over away from that line does the shadow begin. How far below do her eyes go? Work side to side, eye to eye. Keep them going together. I'm just estimating in my in my mind with with visual um, cues. How far from the eyebrow is the crease in the eye, and then the eyelid, and then the bottom of the eye? How much space do I need for those elements? The shadow is crucial. It indicates form. It's a great guideline for the rest of the features. And it indicates that brilliant light that's falling on her. So it'd be a great dark and light. There's no one correct way to continue with the drawing. It will always depend on the model, the lighting, what emotion that you're going toward. This one has such a strong delineation between light and dark, um, the shadow and the light on her, as well as the dark hair, that Putting in the shadow area and the dark of the eyes, that's what I've decided to start on first. I will need to get those dark enough so that the light will pop out when I work on it. Even though I'm drawing the eye right now, those lines will go away because pastel is difficult to place in a precise spot. So the uh, edges will overlap as I add values and color. Getting the shadow areas right now is my only intention. But you know what? It's a very fun thing to do. It kind of makes the painting uh, come to life a lot quicker. I'm using a pastel pencil for this. It's a dark value warm color. <clears throat> And even though it looks fairly dark here, I am not pressing down the, um, the edges or lightly done. Judging from the vertical center line, where are the nostrils? How far over do they go? What are the placements for the wings of the nose? Erasing those beginning lines. Once I don't need them, I like to take them out so that they don't interfere um, with pastel that goes on top of them, as well as they, um, they will tend to draw your eye as you're drawing, pull your eye to them. Um, and fool you as to where something is. 
Because at some point you're disregarding the photo reference and just going by what you know is right. Is it hard to draw a face? Is it hard to get all these proportions right? I have to say no because you're familiar with faces. You look in the mirror every day. You see yourself. Uh, you see other people. You know, just know what is right and what is wrong when you look at a painting. So, to a large extent, it's trust yourself. Believe in yourself and what you see. Not what you think you know, just in what you see. Squint down. One of the darkest things on the painting are her eyes. Are they as dark as her hair? Squint down and compare it. But is the shadow as dark as her eyes? No. So I'm using a very light cross hatching uh, motion to set those shadows in. Now that was a key point right there. On the nose, you can't always see an edge. And on the left side of the painting, that nose will just kind of disappear into the side of her face. So I erased that line. Using that straight edge, where was the nose, the edge of the mouth, and the left eye, the eye on the left, where do they line up? That's where, that's how you can use those vertical lines to help you in the placement of different elements of the face. Where do they fall in relation to something else? And the lips, oh please don't just put them in with dark hard lines. They won't be that way in real life. You can create the lips so easily by using the shadow under the bottom lip and whatever shadows you might see above the lips. The shadow that's falling on the top lip, great information. You'll see as I get further into the painting, that shadow line under her nose gets corrected several times because it's falling over a form that is shaped and falling away from the plane of the face. Using that fan brush over that soft pastel pencil uh, gives a very um, subdued, blurred look to those shadows that I've put in, the hatching of the shadows. For now, I'm keeping that um, line that separates the profile from the dark area of her face. It'll come and go, depending on what I'm painting, what part of it I'm painting. Always thinking, am I get, am I, am, am I getting her 
personality, even at this stage. Yeah, I want it to look like her, but just as much am I getting the personality? What defines her, even from this early stage? Squint down and determine which part of those shadows are the darkest. Her forehead is in shadow from the hat, but there's a lot of light hitting it coming through the straw area of the hat. Just always be thinking about the lighting. can define the eye a little bit more. Work on getting the shadow in there correct. Values. This point, you can take it to whatever level of completion that you want. all the way to make it a perfect drawing or just enough to get started with the painting. Double check. Do I have these, does I have the edges of the lips in the right position in relation to the eye, to the nose? I love how that brush just softens the edges. I felt like I had the eye too close to the outside edge easy enough to move it over at this stage. The drawing, oh, the drawing is so important. Don't skip these wonderful, fun steps before you start the use of your pastel. Nice close-up. I want to talk a little bit about comparing colors. For this painting, I want to have a, a yellow that's not yellow, but not neutralized either. And I've picked up all of these colors that are in my hand don't they all look the same? And yet when I put them on this uh, UART sanded paper to compare them, watch what happens and how you see them differently. That's a pretty yellow and that's the one I like. I think it's a very worn down Mount Vision because it's, I know it's one I love. Here's another one. It looks like it's maybe lighter than the others. And when I put it on the paper, it's a lot lighter than this one, but it doesn't look like it has much yellow in it. This one, would you have believed that? 
it looks like it's the same value, but when you put it down on paper, the eye sees it as darker and more golden perhaps than, than this shallow up here. It would be a good one um, as the form starts to turn into shadow, perhaps. And that one may be the same value as this one, but it has more of a green tone to it. So again, yellow is not yellow, is it? This one, oh, it's lighter than these. but a different color from these three. It looks like it's more of a shadow or um, an unlit kind of color. This one, I would say before I put it down, is going to be more golden, more of a creamy color. And that is the difference comparing all these four yellows. So, which is the one that I'm going to use in the painting? Not just one. There will be several of them. Now I'm super fast adding the darks in, refining that profile line where it will be the most sharpest, most defined edge. With the pastel pencils, it's, uh, it's easy to just mass in those darks of her hair, leaving space where I feel like the hair is lighter, thinner, the little tendrils falling out. Where are the darkest parts of the hair? That's a light spot there. Now I can put dark, more dark around it. A little bit different color in the lighter parts, just as a reminder that yeah, that part of her hair is thinner, finer, more wispy. Love this, the freedom of this hatching motion. This is a, a pipe foam insulation and it is terrific at blending the pastel into the depths of the sanded paper. It eliminates all of the little white speckles. Yep. Got to get those darks back in there. Why the pastel pencil instead of pastel? It doesn't fill up the tubes as easily. It's a hard, one of the hardest sticks. even though it's soft. Reminding myself where the outer edges of that shadow will be the darkest. Warmer colors on the face than in the hair. Amazing how going over the eye sockets with the pastel pencil, you can still see the features of the eye, but you can see that it's in shadow. Using the foam insulation to push that pastel into the white of the paper and the face becomes dimensional, doesn't it? Fun, fun thing to see.
ha haven't decided yet how I'm going to handle that hat. So it's still just a mirage. A little bit of blocking in on the clothing. But will it stay? Mm. It's just a guess. Alignment, alignment, alignment. So important in getting the likeness and the expression and the emotion. So I use that vertical line from the pupil of the eye to the edge of the mouth. How far do I extend that mouth? Working with Mount Vision, soft pastels on the forehead, trying to get that shadow right. It's not as dark as I want to make it. My brain keeps telling me it's shadow, it should be darker. But squinting down, squint, squint down, and you'll see that it's not so dark. This is a Juro soft pastel in, from the portrait set. Beautiful, beautiful color. Where is the nostril? With the slant of the nose. Here I'm making it fairly dark, but the nostril has a lot of warmth in it, a lot of red. So that'll be adjusted later. Oh, I think it's starting into the ugly stage now. Crazy colors. The part where the painting doesn't look very good. There's that shadow along her, the right side of, of the reference photo on her face. Is it caused by her hair? or by her hat, or just the turn of the plane of the face. Using a little green, green will turn the form. It's cool enough against the pinks that the form will turn. Besides the fact that with pastel, we put on a lot of layers of color, different colors. So what you see now basically disappears in the final rendition. Another Mount Vision color, neutral. On this uh, four times the recorded speed, makes me dizzy kind of watching my head go back and forth looking at the reference photo. But I really do look at it that often. And that's a good thing. It's reminding yourself, where does this go? Where is this in relation to that? Apologies for my head getting in the way sometimes. Where the camera is positioned to get the painting surface in view, sometimes I just have to lean over and get in the way. Where are the darkest darks in the eye socket? They have to be painted in in order for the eye to recede.
Ah, love putting that warts in. The edges of the mouth, the, the outer reaches of the mouth, have a darker tone. Put them in there, and it, your eye will, your, your mouth will surprisingly set further back, make that curve around the face. Yeah, sometimes I touch the painting surface. It's not a rubbing action. I'm not blending the pastel strokes. I am tamping down the little particles of pastel that sit on the top. And sometimes to do just a smidge, just a tiny, tiny bit of blending the pastel the edges of one color, one value into another. Even with these colors that are on there, they're a mid-tone value. You can see so clearly the light on her face. This is a little test right here of the gold, the yellow. Now with the pink on top of it makes it look like believable skin. A few touches of the foam insulation to soften edges, to blend the color into the paper, allows me to get more pastel, defined, definite, careful, thoughtful strokes. Some of those will remain visible throughout the painting. Others will be covered up. Leaving those little spaces on the left side of the hair will let me go in later and carve in or sculpt in the background color. How dark to make that darkest shadow? Many colors blending on top of it. But the, the important thing is, you see that I did not start out with the darkest dark on the hair. I started out with a medium brown, and now I've brought the black over it to create more depth in her hair. Still more blending in. Softening edges. Diminish the strokes. Reinforcing the hairline, softening the edges, making them a little bit darker. The shadow line, the pastel pencil does not deposit a lot of pastel on the surface. It's not very dense compared to this stick of pastel. And you might wonder, well, why didn't I just use that gray 
tone from the beginning. Why have I put down yellow, pink, green, and now going over it with this gray? If you look at, for instance, the skin on your hand, you will see a lot of different colors. You may think it's fair skin, and yes it is, but it has pinks, greens, purples, blues, reds, different color lights, some yellows. And clean those pastels as you're using them. So why layer so many uh, colors of pastel into the paper? It creates more realism on the final piece. Not every part of the layer underneath is covered up. I have thought about leaving out the hat on this girl because her face and her profile are so beautiful, but I can't leave out the hat. <clears throat> and the reason is the hat is creating this wonderful shadow on her forehead and then allowing the light to hit her very strongly on the cheeks. So uh, sometimes you want to change a photo. In this case, uh, it would be a wholesale change and I, I have to keep the hat to um, identify the shadow reason. This part I have left at normal speed, no speed up, no slow down, uh, because I wanted you to see that the strokes are slow, deliberate, careful, sometimes just short strokes, tapping the paper, Figuring out where the value changes are, sometimes very light strokes. The hat itself, the colors and the background went through so many different changes during the process of the painting. I ultimately left those out of this video. I deleted them from the video just to save time, but uh, it was an ordeal to get the hat, the background, into the personality of the painting.
Now that I had the shaded side of her face established in value, I had to work on the light side. So why didn't I just start with the very lightest of colors? Because they would be dead. They would not have any depth to them, no liveliness. So um, put the greens in first. I'm going over them with a lighter color now, but uh, it's still throughout the painting, throughout the process, those values come and go. And the colors, the hue of the colors, changes uh, dramatically in the light area. Sometimes yellow, sometimes um, the warmer reds and pinks. And that's because seeing a color next to another color changes your own perception of it. Is it working? Uh, is it the right kind of yellow? Does that yellow have the greenish tint to it? Or is it more into a lively true color? Lots of different reasons to keep changing. But it's always a process of comparing what does this color, this value, look like in relation to what is next to it. It changes. As well as trying to turn that form back into her hair. The nose has a lot of warmth to it. We may see it, uh, as in the photo, blown out into almost a white color. But in reality, looking at it, there would have to be some pink, some warmth to it. How light do I want to make that light that, that um, hits her on the right side of the painting? It will have to be darker than the light that's on the left side of the painting. It will in fact be darker than the dark that is on the left side of the painting. Well, I just had a big surprise uh, in using the value finder. In looking at the painting so far, it looks as if the light side of her face is not very different from the dark side of her face, value-wise, not in color. and. So I thought, well, I guess I have to go darker on the shadows. Or maybe I should just lighten the sunlit part of her face. And, um, you know, what to do. I took out my value scale, and boy, was I really surprised when I applied it. I've used um, these values four and five over toward the shadow area and surprisingly this shadow is already in this value range and I certainly don't want it to go any darker 
In fact, if I look over at the uh, reference photo, that's about what it is. Uh, this is maybe a little closer, but I don't want to go that dark on a young person's skin. So I want to stay in this, and this shadow is already that dark. And I found in using this that the darkest shadow is actually on this part of her face but then this part of her nose is almost as dark and the forehead area even though it's in the shadow of the hat is light is the lightest of the dark so and i'm going in this range of darks for the shadow and in the photo her the light part of her face is blown out because of the camera it's it's almost a white and and i know that's not really true so i can step it down to the next value value nine and translate that over to this part of her her face so the challenge right now is adjusting those values so that they're believable not too dark on a young person's skin and fun to look at but a very definite delineation of the uh, of the sunlight part i say sunlight it was actually an indoor shoot but and when i finish the painting who is to know that On the edge of her face, I want to pay attention not only to the angle of the profile, but to the ins and outs. Below the cheekbone, there's usually a slight recession, and then across from the lips, there is a fullness on the edge, uh, a little rounding. Then along the cheek uh, chin line, there'll be another slight change of angle and indentation so all of those have to be uh, taken into account when making that line that defines her profile adding some of the pink color back that's on top of the green that was previously there livens the skin up
At this stage of the painting, it's all about refining and adjusting, modifying what you already have down. Putting in real skin tones. Adjusting the angles. Where is it dark? Where is it light? What do you want to emphasize? Think about those edges, soften them, let them bleed together. The foam insulation works so beautifully for this. Well, surprise, I decided to go over the light area again, darken it up, give it more warmth, <laughs> using pinks, a deep cherry color. Part of that is caused by the sanded paper surface itself. Uh, it's rough, and until you get enough layers of pastel on it, uh, you can't get the smoothness of skin, especially not in this one that I'm looking for. So the deeper, richer colors go on top of the whites, the, the light colors I have put on, and then the lights go back on. It's not a frustrating process. In fact, it's a little fun to see if you can create that natural look of cosmetics, a natural skin on a three on a two dimensional surface. Using those same colors on her neck in the shadows as well as in the light area to enrich the skin. It helps the shadows to stand out. They'll be, they'll be cooler than the skin, but now I can put the light colors on top of it. I later add the necklace, but I decided that it was of no real interest in the painting, so 
I brushed it out, painted back over it. Relating the face to the neck and to the forehead with these colors. Three of the colors that I love in skin tones are Sennelier 9, 10, and 11. Uh, used in conjunction with each other and on top of other colors, they give a very natural looking skin. And they're very soft, so that it allows me to blend uh, the colors that are underneath with a pastel stick itself, not with my hands. They really are my favorite colors. Sennelier 9, 10, and 11. I am not blending the pastel with my hands, even though it looks like it. I am just tap, tap, tapping on top of the pastel to uh, slightly, very slightly compress some of the little pigment areas that are sitting on top. That jawline, even though it is in, in shadow, and I can't really decide where the, the jaw, the neck, and the hair separate from each other, it still has to be uh, somewhat defined with color temperature and color value so that you see the rest of her face or you can imagine the rest of her face. Even though I like this light shade of purple and a deeper lilac that I'm putting on around her hat for the background, I ultimately decide I have to change not only that, but her hat. And the reason is the tilt of the hat, looking at the painting in person, does not work. Very careful, studied strokes with this pastel. Why am I using green instead of the blue that's on the shirt? I felt that with the youthfulness that I was portraying in her face, I didn't want the strong blue color. And this sort of sage light green complemented everything else that was going on with her face, with her hair. The blue is a very intense color. I think it would have taken everything away from the face. You can use those strokes to carve into the hair to create those little tendrils without actually painting them. Oh boy, have I really got black in my hand? Yes, it's one of the things that I learned from Christine Swan, um, an artist whose work I admire. 
you've got to get the black, the pupils, into the eye to make them really stand out. If you don't, they may be weak looking, sleepy. So, yep, get that black in there and then build the iris colors around it. The depth of the eye, the eye socket with these darker colors.
one of the problems of uh, working where the light changes uh, during the daytime, for instance, my studio has a bank of windows all along it, and uh, around three o'clock, the sun comes around this corner of the house and um, puts more light in the room than normal. So I was working on this eye and couldn't really see the reference photo very well. Then a cloud covered the sun and I was able to see a lot more detail in this eye and relate it back to the painting. Do I have it right or is there more working to be done on it? Touches of green within the shadow area to turn the form. And a very slight drag into the other colors to melt that edge of the skin into the shadow area. Wow, an intense deep orange at this stage of the painting on top of lighter values. Yeah, I see it and I think it's there. So putting it in and then putting other colors on top of it, you'll, you'll see it'll come out very natural looking. Surprise yourself sometimes. Let your hand reach for that color that you're thinking, oh no, don't do that. And rework an area. If it's bothering you, fix it. Critique it yourself. Is it working? Is it right? What if I do this to it? Will it improve it? Usually it does. Sometimes it doesn't. And the wonder, the beauty of pastel is that you it can either brush it off or apply other colors on top of it, other values even on top of it. That shadow under her neck, I think it's bothered me the whole painting. Uh, what to do with it? It, it, it never... My goodness, what did she do? That's okay. See, you can put something else on top of it. Now, using the side of the pastel, you can blend and melt colors to purple. Just surprise yourself with what you can do with your, your pastel palette. I know that ultimately that purple is not going to work because it's not used anywhere else in her skin.
I'm showing this part of the process because the thing that bothered me most of all throughout the whole process of the painting was the shape of her forehead. I could not get it right. Um, it had to, the hair has to be subtle around those edges and the, the shape uh, where it turns, where the forehead has an angle, where the hair part is, it all has to look believable, real, and it it didn't. So I I just had to keep reworking it uh, with different colors, with different values, looking away from the painting, uh, looking away from the reference photo, and just going with what my instinct or intuition said was the right thing to do. Putting some light areas into the hair. Do I really see this brown? Is it part of my memory of the of the live session? Not really. In the photo, that part of her hair looks grayish, almost white in places. But that wouldn't be so natural looking. Adding this auburn looking color works really well with her skin. And it is very subtle, very calm changes in the tones of her hair.
The hat and the background, I've painted uh, probably five different colors and did, didn't like any of them. So I've decided to redraw the uh, outside areas of the hat. And I think that, that the tilt of the hat was what had bothered me a lot. And um, just redo all of that area. Why didn't I just go with the real hat colors from the beginning? Because that's the way it's turning out now. But rather than a black, I'm using a brown. <clears throat> to indicate the weaving around the edge of that straw hat. Just creating texture by the strokes of the pastel. I don't want all to have to paint all of those little pieces of fabric in, so just indicate them. Feeling my way around the hat now, what do I want to do with it? Wiggle strokes to indicate that ribbon. The main thing is I can already see that the tilt of the hat is what's right now. It works very well. That little touch of blue on her hat now makes me think, well, she's, let's pretend she's outside in the sunshine. There's some sky that's visible behind her. Let's keep the usefulness in this painting and make it light back there. It'll also explain the extreme light and dark that's on her face. I feel so much better about this that's in there now than anything I've used before. So I know I'll stay within this value oh, for the background, for the hat. I just need to get rid of that ugly, ugly, ugly orange gold that I have in the background. Now I can see the shape of the hat around her. A few little sculpted pieces into her hair to indicate where the hair flips out and the light shows through it. Not too dark on the brown that's in there. It doesn't need to be. But the brown gave me a very good basis for putting a, a mid-tone on top of it. Little pressing down very hard to indicate there's not a straight line from the ribbon to the hat. Very hard pressure on this Sennelier blue. And 
indicating that there's light from the sky coming in through the straw of the hat. So I guess I should put some of that into the sky as well. A little bit of blue here and there. I'm loving it now so much better. I have kept this part of the video in actual time, not speeded up and not slowed down, just so you can see how thoughtfully and slowly some of the strokes are made at the finishing up of the painting. I want to get the feeling, the emotion in her eyes the same way that I see it. I want it painted that way just so you can see it. And I have to do that by very slowly looking back and forth between the painting and my reference and using my memory of the girl who was posing. Some touches to the paper are very light, very, almost like a feather touching it, and others a little bit harder. I'm thinking what will give a rounded appearance what stays in the absolute shadow and what comes into the light and what gives touches of reflected light. What are the edges doing at this particular point? Do they disappear, kind of melt into the shadow? Or are they hard? I remember that at the beginning of the painting, this small section of where the skin goes into the shadow is a hard edge. And I need to keep it that way. But above it, as the top of the eyebrow and just under it, moves into the shadow that's softened up a bit. Because it is so difficult to get a pastel stick to touch the paper surface at just the right point, just where you want it to go, these tiny details are easier to do with a pastel pencil. I have an electric sharpener that I use and as the pastel on the pencil wears down, I push it right back into the sharpener. Eyelashes are uh, always a curious thing to deal with. Individual lashes, when you look at a person, uh, if they're natural lashes, don't show up as individuals. Little tiny pieces of hair coming out of the eyelash. They're 
more a a mass of 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 usually darkness. So I'm figuring out a way at this point to get those lashes in there, the bulk of the lashes, the mass of them, without painting each one individually. The outer rim of the uh, iris has a darker edge that helps define it. Just slight touches of a reddish brown. A deeper purple, neutral. Cleaning that tip off between each little stroke so that I don't mix the color into it. Was that the right value? Holding it up against the values that I've already selected lets me know that yes or no. Do I need to change it before I put it on the paper? And we never have the right, the right value or color so I have to just keep going back into my palette and deciding what I want to put up there that part of the eye is uh, that's on the left is getting some reflected light through the hat Blue? Mm, what is she going to do? Do you like that? Constantly asking yourself. Going slow with this small detail of the eye. Ooh, this is a bit darker. Her eyes are brown. This is a blue. Does it work? Oh my goodness, magenta, strong red violet, mm. wow.
I think that's looking pretty good. Alive. There, that's good. Did I do the right thing putting that sienna on? Or should I have left the red violet? They interact with each other, those colors. The blue, the red violet, the sienna. One alone would not have given the same effect. Wrapping the bridge of the nose. Gosh, does she, does she really have that much patience in putting all these little teeny tiny dots of color on? Uh, yeah, I guess I do. When I'm actually painting, I don't think about that. But watching it here, editing this video, I wonder. That wonderful little uh, lightest part of the skin around the eye. It's at the edge of the tear duct. Look in the mirror and find it on yourself. I'm trying to find a, a sharp edge on the pastel to use as well as a clean edge. Keep turning it, moving it. That whole eye socket, eyebrow, down to the puffiness that's below the eye, that's all one package. You have to see it as a whole, but within that whole part, define some of the little details. And that's what this actual pace video has been about. slowing down not only the viewing mm -hmm. but when you're working on it slowing yourself down is there skin uh, yellowish in some parts and pinkish in another and then a much lighter almost white color because of the intense light. Now we're going into that pink.
My easel is adjacent to a bank of um, windows and at times during the day um, the light changes minute to minute. Uh, clouds go over the sun and uh, get a darker effect in the room. So you'll see that happen with the video. The highlight on the nose, of course the nose is the most protruding part of the face, the closest to the viewer, the closest to the light. So get that sunlight on there. This is almost a pure white. As well as putting the white over some of the uh, deeper or more colorful accents on the with the pastel it has the effect of lightening those darker passages but still making them believable and of a value that works Soften those edges not by blending back and forth with a finger, but by tap, tap, tap. Just a reminder here that the camera is on an angle to the painting surface. So while it may look like the hat on the right hand side is awkward or not correct, it's because of the camera angle. Uh, camera to painting is at a, at a slant, at a distorted angle. That affects what you're seeing on the face as well too. A little green next to the warmer tones lets that skin turn.
Okay, I am finally getting to the lips and adjusting their colors and a little bit of the shaping. The shadow that is under the nose has to con fall onto the top lip and the bottom lip and underneath it. So the light dark has to conform to the shadow that's under the nose. I don't want to go too dark, not as dark as uh, the reference photo shows. And I don't want them to look like they are painted on. They have to actually be part of her, the rest of her face and, and, and look very natural. So even though I'm using this very dark color right now, um, it, it will dissolve and kind of look like it belongs with the skin. Right now, it kind of looks scary. I mean, why would I put that dark color on there if I'm not going to keep it? Because I need it underneath the lighter colors to give them vitality. Adjusting the shape of the lip. How do I actually see it?
I encourage everyone to self-critique your painting so that you can push it as far as you need to. Uh, don't be satisfied. Keep working on it. In this case, I realized that the lips were not wide enough. The mouth was not wide enough. So I used my plumb line, the straight line, down from the eye to find out where her lips should actually end. And I'm making that correction um, to add to the fullness of the lips. Sometimes it just helps so much to put it away overnight at least, um, put it across the room from you, look at it, study it, what works, what doesn't work, what can I do to improve it. And if something is bothering you, don't be satisfied with it. Work on it. And, and I know that when this painting is finished, there will be things that a master artist or a highly awarded artist would be able to see, to fix, to change. But for me, for this point in my career, in my art journey, these are the things that I can do now. I think of all of the ugly stages that the hat and the background went through while I was painting this, and I am so pleased with it now, uh, so much, so satisfied, and very glad that I was willing to keep brushing off and making changes until I found what worked for me and what works for this painting for the girl that I'm trying to portray and the emotion that I find in her face. My title will ultimately become That Sunny Day When We Laughed. And doesn't that fit with where I've taken the colors? Titles. Oh, I really love titles. Sometimes I do struggle with them, but most of the time the painting itself suggests a title, something that is fun or something that is just very thoughtful. And it becomes part of the story of the painting. The title does. I am erasing the bottom of the painting where the pastel has slightly colored the surface. I could, of course, finish the blouse and make it all realistic, but I love this impressionistic kind of approach, this unfinished detail. I hope you have enjoyed this video, this portrait painting. And if you have, please recommend it to your friends, share it, and hit my subscribe button on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching.